Okay. Yes. Stream. Yes, sir. Hello, hello. Welcome in, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I was like, this is a weekly thing. So true. Hello, everyone. Welcome into the stream. Um, today, we are going to be um, learning about movement. We're going to be learning about movement in our art. And that isn't necessarily like... We're not necessarily learning about like, you know, oh, we're in Photoshop today. Um, we're not necessarily learning about like, oh, movement as in like, this is the action that we're gonna take. Like movement within all poses, but specifically through posing, um, not necessarily just with action poses, but movement when we draw a pose um, as a whole. So we are gonna be learning about that today. Um, let me know if my audio sounds good. Let me know if I need to turn myself down or if I need to turn something up. Um, let me know how I sound, chat. Um, yeah, that's corn. I wanted to put corn in the, the little doodle for the beginning. Happy <laughs> corn, thank you. Corn chip, yeah, my son. My son's not the brightest, but he means well. <laughs> um, he just it today. You sound good? Okay, excellent. Hello. Um, hello, hello. Sound good? Fantastic. Okay. How crispy? Thank God. We love to see it. Apologies if I sound kind of tired. It's because I am. <laughs> this week has been kind of crazy. Um, but I should be a little bit better next week. But yeah, I am a bit sleepy today, but it's fine. So be it. Um, but before we get going, before we get into the lesson portion, we know the drill because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 a month, but $5 a month is where you'll get my working files. Um, we're also going to be starting to upload different things on there. I believe we're going to be having, um, shoot, we're going to have class recordings as well is going to be starting to be implemented, stuff like that. So we're going to be revamping our Patreon. Um, but be sure to check out the spots that have a limited amount of them before they are gone. Okay. For this week sucks, yeah, right. Art nerds. No, no, no. Art nerds. Um, but yeah, my son's not the brightest, but he as well. I don't know if I have the energy to do the corn voice today. I did it. Yes, I did it on um, a corn voice like four hours yesterday <laughs> because I played a session. <laughs> oh, wait, I should have saved that. It's like, let's screenshot that and send that to, to a friend. <laughs> Just so I have that there too. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know how that happened. Thought I lost my pencil. You can get pencils for like three dollars, bro. Oh boy, movement. Anyone else like to draw eye bags on characters? That's how I make my characters look a little bit older. <laughs> it's fun. Uh I want to do something a bit funkier for the, the demo today, so I'm going to try and keep the lesson portion short. Um, for those who are here for the first time, this is a lectury stream, so that means we're going to be starting off with a lecture about the topic at hand, and then we're going to be moving on to the final illustration, which, if you saw the poll this week, it was the option that one was swinging a sword or swinging a weapon. Um, so yes, I will be drawing corn, um, but that's what we want to do today. Okay. So movement, movement is a principle of design.
hi, hello, Nimble Wake Brain, my favorite individual, my favorite person. <laughs> I'll always say hi to Ray. I hope you all know that. <laughs> my favorite human being. Um, Medibang, no. Today we're working in Photoshop. This is Photoshop. Little guy, big sword, my favorite archetype, so true. Um, Korn has an axe, though. He doesn't have a little sword. <laughs> Ray knew, like, so true. <laughs> but yeah, so movement is a principle of design. So there's... <laughs> is that Oz Ozzeroth? Um, movement is a principle of design. It determines... There's two different things, two main things to movement. Um, it's It either determines how a viewer's eyes move around a canvas, or it's the act of drawing someone moving. So this is, like, literal movement. This is, like, interpretive movement. Um, when we have interpretive movement, it doesn't necessarily involve a person. So say if we have, like, movement in, like, say if we've got, like, let's see, this is interpretive. Alright, this one makes a someone or something. Nope, there we go. Something moving. My pen broke recently, so I don't have my back eraser, so I'm like relearning how to use functions <laughs> while I'm drawing. So this is literal. Will I be turning off music? Nope. Her handwriting is so nice. I appreciate it. I am trying to move quick so so this one is like interpretive All right so let's say we have like ooh, no let's not do that because that's, that's, really, that's boring let's say we've got like sunset this is a sun i'm gonna make them cool let's give them like <laughs> um and then there's like a pathway Right? This is... <laughs> Give me a load, Oz. Um, so this is interpretive movement, right? If we have something like this, our eyes will follow this pathway to get towards the sun, right? This movement is interpreted. I could even make this stronger by adding, like, clouds that point towards the sun. And this helps control our eyes, and it helps the piece feel like it has movement, right? Everything is moving towards the sun. This is using leading lines. That's like a whole different principle. Um, and this makes the, so there's movement in this piece, but it's not like it's literal. It's not like there's somebody moving. The sun is not walking. Um, so it's an interpretive kind of movement. But say if we have literal movement, we've got somebody Oh, is the music slightly loud? Okay, let me turn it down then. My apologies. Is that a little bit better? I don't think the sun is sunny, no. <laughs> yeah, all right, sick. My bad. I didn't realize it was too loud. Sunny. I don't think I've talked about Sunny on stream before. If riding a steed had won the pole, y'all would have seen Sunny. Sunny. I would have drawn Sunny and Kingsley. <laughs> and this is like literal. Because they're actually moving. So, how much did I miss? Not much. Um, so this is interpretive movement, right? Interpretive movement is nothing's really moving. It's just that there's a lot of pieces within the piece that makes everything kind of move within it, right? So like your eyes move around the canvas, they all go towards the sun here. But literal movement is if the person is actually moving, 
if the person is actually moving, right? So if the person is walking, running, jumping, whatever, right? That's actual literal movement. So they are literally moving. So interpretive movement. I'm actually trying to make my handwriting a little bit neater. Why did I make the brush larger though? <laughs> what are we drawing? I'm just doing the notes beforehand. And there we go. Interpretive movement occurs. Imposes as well as dark on pieces. Depends. No, is determined. How do you use lines to make something look like it's moving? You know, that thing sometimes using comics and stuff. We'll be going over um, action lines later on. Uh, I'll be, I'll talk about that when I actually get to the illustration portion because uh, Korn will be swinging his axe. So I do want to, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll ha like I always draw that. So I'll, I'll put that in there. Can you do a mix of both types of both interpretive and literal? It's, it's one or the other. <laughs> Either the thing is moving or it's not. <laughs> In terms of, like, can you do a mix of both and have, like, both in a piece? Yes, you should. Um, but in terms of, like, is the object either literally moving or interpretively moving? It's 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 one or the other. <laughs> it's either not moving or moving all the time. Did I watch a new Buzz Lightyear? No, I did not. Why do the words in this song sound like Ronald Reagan? I couldn't tell you. Um, okay. Sorry. Hang on. Something's bothering me. Okay. Thought I watched a new Top Gun? I didn't even realize it was a new Top Gun. So it's determined by the flow of the pose and the line of action within it. All right. So somebody like sitting will still have movement to this pose, right? And it's just dependent on how we draw the pose, right? There should be a general flow to the pose that's presented. And when we have that general flow, how we achieve that is by, you know, making sure that our gesture is nice and smooth before we actually illustrate the pose in full. And how do we enhance this? So let's say if we have, I'm doing this kind of, because I, I saw a bunch of the comments on the poll. Sleeping did not win, but I assumed I can, I figured I could probably do it during the, the lecture portion. So say if we have somebody like sleeping, somebody kind of relaxing, right? And if we have somebody like this, right? They're not moving. They are, they are not moving, right? They're not doing anything, right? But we want to make sure that there's still movement within this pose. We want to make sure that there's still a flow. So what did I do? I kind of determined, okay, are they leaning on something? What's a natural kind of looking pose? And I was like, maybe they're kind of following a curve. The whole body kind of follows a curve. And I tried to do the pose nice and quick. You want to make sure that your gesture is nice and quick first. And then just kind of enhance the curves of the body. You want to make sure your gesture is nice and quick first before you get into the nitty gritty details, right? Because if you get really, you know, slow in the beginning, you start off really slow, you start off like, oh, I'm going to focus on one area, focus on details. I think I talked about this last week, but if you focus on details for too long, you're going to lose the flow, you're going to lose the gesture. So you'll start to like 
lose that movement. And your movement is what you need in order to make sure that a pose isn't stiff. Alright. So for this one, I'm just kind of following a curve. If we had, like, say... I only ever choose the losing options. Um, little tip for everybody, by the way. Well, not tip, but little, little like, thing. Usually, or, like, 99% of the time. This week, it actually wasn't. But 99% of the time, on the poll, the very first option is the one that I want to do the most. So, like, if you ever wanted to do, like, a Jesse's Choice kind of thing, the first option is, is Jesse's Choice. <laughs> uh, technically, I'm, like, all of them are my choice, but, like, one of them will always be one that I want to do more than the others. So let's say somebody's just standing there, right? Let's say if we just draw somebody just standing there. We'll just draw somebody A posing. Oh boy. They're kind of I posing, actually. <laughs> Let's say they're just standing like this, right? This looks not great. But, um, let's say that they're just standing like this, right? This pose has no movement. There's no movement to this pose. There's no interest. They just stand, they're standing straight up and down, right? This has no movement. Right? They're standing stock still. They're standing just like that, right? And it's like if they just kind of stand some, but it's just... It's just pose for dominance. <laughs> I find that the I pose is more dominant than the T pose is. Um, but let's say that we just have the person just standing there, not doing anything. It's very, very vertical. It's boring. It's a boring pose. Most of these poses you'll only see for reference sheets um, or like turnarounds or anything. It needs to be boring so you can get like a very clinical aspect of the person. Um, or like anatomical drawings. Very stiff, very um, scientific. Doesn't need to be anything crazy with movement. But if you're drawing like a character... You'll want to make sure that there's movement within the pose. And usually, if they're just standing there, there's a natural way to have them standing right. Stand up for a second. If you're sitting right now, stand up for a second. Right? Try to stand like this. Feel how unnatural it feels. Right? And then just kind of stand as if you're just relaxed. There will probably some con be some contrapposto to your pose. There will probably be some... Doesn't necessarily mean that you're, like, being sassy or anything. It's just, like, you'll probably have weight on one leg by comparison to the other one. Wow, that's really exaggerated. I didn't mean to do that exaggerated. <laughs> I tend to exaggerate the length of legs. I didn't mean it to go that crazy, though. So you'll probably have some kind of contrapasto happening. Maybe one hand is on the hip here. And the other arm is just kind of lying there. Alright, this isn't amazing, but this pose has more movement. Notice how this act this line of action is just straight up and let's is just straight up and down. Right? No movement. But if you kind of take the line of action for this one, start up here. This one has more of an S curve. And this one is just straight up and down. So this one has movement. Also notice the angle of the hips and the arms are opposite to each other. This is called contrapposto. Opposite shoulders. Did I spell that right? I might have spelled that wrong. Hang on. Contra. <laughs> Hang on. Nope, I got it. Nice. <laughs> the Augustus statue, true. How long have y'all been drawing? I've been drawing for basically 21 years. Mm. 
to interpret a moving fault occurs in poses as well as background pieces and is determined by the flow of the pose the line of action within it right <sighs> my whole life yeah that's that's my whole life <laughs> 21 years is my whole life um so contrapasso and movement right then this S curve isn't necessarily what causes movement. It is an ideal kind of movement thing, but having a curve, a curve within the body. Pose. Accentuates. Accentuates movement. And usually the more stylized you are, the more intense you go, this curve gets more intense. Like way, way more intense as you continue on. All right, so let's say that I was doing somebody sitting, right? Because I, I did somebody standing. I'm doing a lot of stationary poses for the sole reason that, like, stationary poses tend to be the most difficult to have movement in. So let's say that we have somebody just sitting there. Never forget the curve of the spine. So let's say that they're just kind of... Wow, that's a great looking chair, Jesse. <laughs> that's a thing that I, I find like it's not hard to draw, but like I can never like or I just don't like drawing. Not necessarily that it's like it's not like on the same level as like vehicles or whatever, like where I just like I hate drawing vehicles. But like chairs, I'm just like unless if the chair is interesting, then like I don't want to draw it. But then also, if it's interesting, then it's, like, probably really detailed. And then I also don't want to draw it over and over. <laughs> like, say if it's for, like, a comic piece. And then, like, a chair comes up. And I'm like, man, I gotta draw a chair. And then it's like, if I draw the chair, that's cool. And I can do this really easy dining chair. And it's easy. But then it looks boring. So then I reach this dilemma where I'm like, man, do I make the dining chairs easy and, may and be upset about it? Or make them intricate and also be upset about it? <laughs> Let's say we have somebody sitting like this. Can you do this? Yes, it's good. Sure, this works. This works just fine. There's nothing wrong with this sitting position. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It just lacks personality. It lacks movement. The person's just sitting there. It's an, like a, like a, it's almost like the cool S. Like, it's just like a, or it's like a, like a, like a chair. It's very much like an L pose, right? And like, it's boring. There's really nothing interesting happening. Um, I know you said a lot of the stuff you know is self-taught. Does that include anatomy, proportion, accuracy? Yes. So I taught myself um, measurements and all that fun jazz throughout high school because they didn't really, um, they didn't really tell us too much. Well, they did. They told us measurements, but then it, I took it upon myself to like memorize it and then just drill it into me. Um, and by the time I hit college, it was like I already knew that stuff. Um, do I do comics? Yes, I'm a comic artist. Um, there you go, lovely Daria. Thank you. I haven't updated Grayson in like six months. <laughs> um, so this is good. This works, right? It's fine. Yes, all streams are available to watch afterwards. Um, but let's say this person's like tired. Let's say this person's like like doesn't really want to be here. Or like they've been sitting and they've been doing like work for ages, right? Let's 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 make this pose a little bit more interesting. So maybe they're like deep in their work. They're hunched over the table. And then let's have this hand here. Draw the hand first. Mm -hmm. 
kind of scrunch them up. One foot out, something like that. Then we have the chair and the table. This has movement. It's good. It's proportional. Proportional but boring. It's better. Interesting and has personality, right? So this is good, right? There is indeed an S-curve that goes throughout the body. There we go. But it's a little bit boring. This one. Has a much more intense C-curve. So this one is an S, but this one is a C. And sometimes the letter C is better depending on what you're going for. Right? Movement isn't necessarily all about having the S curve within the spine. Sometimes there's a different kind of curve, but a curve should always be present. Some kind of curve tends to look a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I feel like I sit in that position way too often. I was literally just sitting in that position, then I realized what I was doing and I sat back up. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much how you would add movement, right? Movement is all about curves. So let me just write down a quick checklist of things to think of. I don't have notes this time, so apologies that I'm like kind of all over the place, but how long have I done YouTube? I mean, it's the whole, it's the whole studio who's been, I, I'm like, like, I'm just a streamer. I'm not the one who owns this channel, um, but like, I was, shoot, Daria hasn't been here the whole time, I don't think. I don't know if, I don't think Faye's in here. I don't know how long we've been doing this. I think it's like been a, a, a year or two. I think it's been a year or two, something like that. Maybe two years. Do you have a video on anatomy? Yep. Daria can probably grab those. I'm sorry, Daria. I keep like tossing you around everywhere, but. <laughs> yeah, so checklist. How long will the stream be? It will last until 6 p.m. EST. A checklist. What does my So the main three things, right? Number one, does my pose have curves, right? Does the pose have any kind of curve within it? If there is no curve, then you're probably not doing it right, <laughs> right? If you can't really find that curve, if the curve isn't intense enough, then I don't think that there's enough movement in there. There probably won't be enough movement. Whether the curve, whether it's a C curve, whether it's an S curve, you know, whatever, right? There needs to be some kind of curve in there in order for the pose to feel interesting and for it to feel like it has movement. Number two, does it feel natural? Can you do this pose? Can you do it? If you can't, and it or it feels awkward, try again, right? If you can't do the pose, then it, it might feel a bit awkward. Sometimes it's even better if you can't do the pose. If you have the pose, say if it's like an action pose, you can do the pose, but sometimes just doing the straight pose will be too stiff. So you might want to exaggerate it. And that's where we go back to our previous stream about exaggeration. But if you can't do the pose, 99%, especially if it's a stationary pose, if you can't do that pose, then it's wrong. You probably shouldn't do it. And number three, am I going too slow? This is a weird one. This is a weird one. Hear me out. So when we draw a pose, a lot of the times people will go really, really slow. Like they'll be scared about getting the anatomy wrong. They'll be scared about getting blah, 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 this, that wrong. Right. If you move too slowly, you'll realize that it's not necessarily your anatomy that's wrong, but it's your movement that's wrong. 
because you yourself do not have enough movement. You yourself also need to move in order to make your movement feel natural, right? So the faster you move, the faster you get your gesture down, the faster you get your movement down, the easier it will be for you to make a very natural, very interesting looking pose, right? So it's usually better that you move quick. It's like riding a bicycle. The quicker that you move, the easier it will be for you to continue with everything else. And like, again, like riding a bicycle, the faster you go, the easier it is to ride the bike. The faster you draw, the easier it is for you to draw the pose, which is about as strong as it goes, right? That kind of deal. Don't worry about anatomy, eyeball it. I would only say to eyeball it once you have your measurements generally memorized, but that kind of deal. I see the S pose is more stiff, not necessarily, and the C pose is more expressive, but the S pose is symmetrical. Is symmetry inherently less interesting because it's less natural? Yes! Oh my goodness, thank you for bringing that up because I completely forgot about that. Symmetry tends to be very unnatural. Try to stand symmetrically right now. Try to sit symmetrically right now, right? Try to be as symmetrical as possible. Feel how robotic it is. We are not symmetrical people. Your body is not symmetrical. Your face is not symmetrical. I don't care how perfect you think you are. Um, you're, you're perfect the way you are, and you're perfect because you're not symmetrical. So... Symmetry is unnatural. You have a good point, crumpets. Um, but the S pose isn't necessarily... S poses can be. S poses tend to be more... Have more movement in them. It isn't that they don't have any movement. It's more so that, like, you can choose between an S or a C. Um, and it depends on the situation. Like, in this case, the C is a little bit nicer. Um, but in this case, the S pose is a little bit nicer. You know? It just depends on how you decide to proceed. army character symmetry is necessary in some poses for them right if you want them to be robotic then yes everything is pro by discretion but like if you want a natural like just sitting there pose then like don't like symmetry is the end okay and with that that's the lesson portion i wanted to keep it as quick as possible because Oh, sorry to bug which brush to use. Thank you for the donation, too. Um, brush to use uh, Photoshop, very new to drawing a tablet, and in Photoshop. I, um, I'm sorry. All my, br a good chunk of my brushes are custom. Um, so a lot of them are not available anywhere. Some of them I just can't give out. I apologize because I purchased them from other people. Um, but Photoshop, if you have the legal version, Photoshop has a... You either have the legal version or the legal version. Um, if you have the legal version, then uh, Kyle brushes are available for you to download. I love, like currently I'm using a custom, um, but Kyle's building block brush is one of my favorites uh, for sketching. Kyle's ultimate pencil is amazing. I use Kyle's ultimate pencil all the time. Really feels like a pencil, it's great. Um, Kyle's manga edge is what I use for my harsh lining. Um, and then everything else for like rougher lining is a custom brush, unfortunately. Or I purchase it from somewhere else. My rough inker is from True Grit, True Grit Supply, so I bought those brushes from there. Um, but you can just always download stuff from other artists. All right, let's get going on the pose because I had a really sick session yesterday, and I want to draw out what happened. <laughs> It was so sad. It was such a sad session. It was great. <laughs> it started out so funny. <laughs> Thank you for the info. No worries. Thank you for the donation. So, if you didn't vote on the poll, you should have. I'm joking. Um, but you should have. Um, if you didn't see the poll, um, the pose that won for the poll this week was swinging a weapon. I'm drawing my son. What are you playing? Oh, um, D&D. It's my, my D&D session. So if you're wondering who Korn is, that's my D&D character. I play as a little eight-year-old... Eight-year-old Dragonborn Barbarian. I voted for that. Vibes. Actually, I, I don't have a reference, of course. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, wait. <laughs> Hang on. I'll never be able to draw Korn's weapon from memory. It's so hard. Hang on. Uh, there it is. Hello, please. Thank you. Korn's axe. This is a lot of fun to design. 
I need to get better at weapon design. Like, I don't think I'm awful, but I need to get better. That's basically it. I'm like, I think that I'm very okay. Like to play D&D someday? It's really fun. Little dragon boy, that's that's him. Hello, Crow. Welcome in. It's a great weapon design. Thank you. Why axe not be a bird? Because corn's not a bird. <laughs> corn's a dragon. He's a dragonborn. Corn looks like a tortilla. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, so corn. <laughs> okay, so if you want to know the story behind corn, so corn. I, I, my first initial when I was, when I was like told, I'm like, hey, you want to join this campaign from uh, my lovely DM? He was like, he was like, hey, I'm gonna be running a uh, campaign. You want to join in? And I was like, sure. And I had to think of a character. I already had Kingsley, who was another character of mine, but I didn't want to play him as my first character. Um, because I figured I'd want more experience with D&D, because Korn is my first played D&D character. Um, and I was like... Um, and I was like, okay, how am I going to design this character? And my first idea was I wanted a little kid barbarian, because I thought that that'd be really funny. It's like this little child who is, like, strangely violent. And I was like, okay... How am I gonna do this? So I was like, all right, how about I do a barb like a like a dragonborn? Because I'm like, it'd be really funny to have like just a little child dragonborn. Because like a dragonborns are usually very like strong or very like warrior like. And I was like, wouldn't it be kind of funny if like he was like, you know, just kind of dumb. <laughs> kind of dumb and young um so i came up with corn and initially corn was gonna be because i like my i had the idea of like for some reason my brain was like you're gonna name him corn and i was like why and i'm like it's an intrusive thought it's funny and i was like okay i guess his name is corn and i was originally gonna make him like very desert like i wanted to make him very much like a like a thorny toad if you ever know if you know that uh that species of lizard um, and so I was going to make him very deserty, but then I, I read up more about barbarian, like barbarian, like, or yeah, dragonborns. And there's no, like, <laughs> there's no brown option for a dragon. There's just gold or like, there's no sandy option. Like I can't just pick my color, whatever color I want. It has to be like a, there's like a, a set of predetermined like colors that I can choose from. So I was like, man, there's no like sandy colors. So I had to think more. And then I thought of, like, you know the meme? Like, I would sell your soul for one corn chip. And that's how I got corn's design. I based him off of a raven. <laughs> See, he's a little black dragonborn. I'm trying to think of how I would do this pose. He looks horrified. Yeah, yeah. This was a... So last night I played in... Um, we had to, uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of how I would phrase this. So there's this, there's this, there was this girl that we were traveling with, this little girl, and she was, like, infected with this parasite. We didn't know about it until it was too late. And then she got, like, taken over by the parasite, and we had to fight her. It was really sad. Because she was really young. She was, like, a little girl. Like, she was not, like, old or anything. So I had a part where, like, I swung my axe because I needed to, like, hit her in order for her to, like, stop. And, like, I, I like, he shouted out, like, I'm sorry before hitting her. <laughs> it was a great fight. It was a great fight. It was really sad. a really emotional part afterwards. I was like, man. Yeah, corn was really corn was really fun to play as. I'm not used to playing as him during serious situations, so it was like kind of like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> 
How do you play D&D? It's a lot of math. <laughs> Uses Photoshop, I see. I Depending on the week, we switch the program that we use. So last week it was Medibank, this week it's Photoshop, next week it is going to be Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, there's a little bit of math. So it's it's mostly just simple addition, but there's a lot of numbers. I can probably push this back over. I should switch my anchor up. What about Krita? No, I don't really like Krita that much. Yeah, listen, I don't really like math either, but, like, this math is, like, easy enough that, like, I don't care. <laughs> it, it feels like I'm doing nothing. When I say, like, math, I mean, like, the most, the most you add is, like, the highest number you'll ever add to something is 20. Because <laughs> that's usually how high bonuses will go, usually. Procreate? Nope. I don't have an iPad. Every D&D &D book in existence. Nice. I haven't read a single one. Hang on. See, I did this pose and I'm like, I don't really like it. Let's try again. Sometimes it's just better to try again. Do I ever use Blender? Nope. I tend to just do it all off the top of my head. Okay. I need to like pick my battles because it's like this angle is harder to draw corn at from the front, but like it'll be better for the actual pose itself. <laughs> Character my drawing. This is my D and D character. His name is Corn. Learns how to draw weapons. Weapons are easy. Weapons are like so geometric. It's nothing but shapes. Gosh, why am I... People actually drawing 2D in Blender? No, okay. So when he says, like, do you use Blender for drawing? Um, that means, like, do you use, like, 3D models to help you draw? Um, in which case, no, I do not. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess it does have grease pencil, though, yeah. Grease pencil is, like, kind of, like, the, the quote-unquote 2D drawing tool. I knew some people who were somewhat interested but didn't understand my passion for D and I've slowly started loving D and D. Like I've like I, like I I'm less like I've been interested in D and D for less than a year, and I've started playing like less than like two months ago. So like I haven't been playing for very long. I'm not a very long held player, but I've been having so much fun. never used roll 20. I have also never used roll 20 um, because I use D&D &D Beyond. <laughs> Corn is no food. He is friend. He is friend. Do 
to make income off of your art because I might sell art as a hobby when I'm older. I am literal. This is literally my job. Streaming is my job. <laughs> I stream. I teach. Um, I do commissions on the side. I'm a designer for a D&D show. I'm a mer like designer in terms of merch and for some of the characters. Um, yeah, I am. I've been a professional artist for a really long time. We are watching you make income off of art, basically. <laughs> have I ever tried Ibis? I have. I think Ibis is okay. I think it's a great, like, beginner's tool. I don't, like, I don't hate it. How did you get in contact? Find work. Connections. Connections are your best friend. Um, I grew up in an artist's family, so my earliest forms of work was through other family members and friends who needed me for design work. Um, I started working here for Wade Canvas, um, because this, again, not my YouTube channel. I am just, te I'm technically just one of the workers. Um, I first started working for Wayne Canvas when it was an in-person studio. I was one of the instructors. Um, I'm still one of the instructors, but that used to be my only title, um, was an instructor. Um... Yeah, it was one of the instructors and um, a designer sometimes. What's a good price for someone who wants to start making commissions? What is your minimum wage wherever you are? And if you are working for more than an hour on a piece and you are charging less than minimum wage then you are charging too little start at minimum wage and get higher definitely see corn as an animal crossing character Corn would be the weirdest Animal Crossing character because he'd have like the like he'd have the energy of a lazy character, but Corn is not lazy. So it'd be he'd be like a mix of like a jock character and a, and a lazy character. Do I have my own YouTube channel? Nope. I have been asked whether, like, my friends are like, you should, like, stream on your own. And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> no YouTube channel of my own works for two of them. <laughs> small child but due to him being a dragonborn i imagine with almost unnaturally deep voice record no 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 oh boy <laughs> can i do the corn voice right now i'm like kind of tired <clears throat> corn's voice is like this so like when i talk like corn it's like he he has a bit of like a gravelier voice um so like when i talk like corn it's kind of like it's kind of like this so it's like a little kid um <laughs> it's a bit hard to keep up so like when when the session runs long then like i kind of <laughs> it, it tones down a lot more so he's not like he's not a deep voice he's just a bit gravelly corn would have a very high voice in animal crossing he is just a little kid so like he's not like he's not old Sounds like it hurts. It actually doesn't. It doesn't hurt. It's just hard to keep up. <laughs> you gotta do Boreas' voice too much. You'll actually die. Good luck, bro. Boreas' voice was so much. I have a cookie corner. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> mm. 
am I gonna color that in? Yeah, probably. <laughs> that voice matches corn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wanted like a voice that like matches him. I was like, I was like, he can't just be some like. I can't just make his voice a little bit higher because like if I make his voice a little bit higher, then it's just like this is like a little girl's voice and corn's a boy. So I wanted to make him like a little bit. Cause he's a bit, he's a bit more rough hewn. He likes to, he lived in a forest, he eats bugs and dirt. <laughs> he's, he's a little boy, so I was like. Let's see in a scenario my drawing. So yesterday I played in, um, yesterday we had a fight with a, a girl who we were, who we came across. Um, and she had been possessed by a parasite. We couldn't really do anything about it. Um, and we were, like, trying to help her, but by the time we, um, tried to help her, it was a little bit too late. So, we had to fight her. And she'd been possessed by this giant creature, and we had to, we had to kill her. Um, so there was a point when, like, I had to make a hit. And I did hit. Um, but, like, I shouted out, I'm sorry, before I did it. So it was, like, I felt bad. It was a real, it was a sad end to the, it was a sad end to the session. No, it was, it was freaky. It was so great. It was such it was such a good like imagery the way that like um my my lovely DMK the way that he like described it I actually can't describe it it's a little bit too R rated um for the stream but it was really awesome it was a lot of body horror it was really sick She wasn't a girl anymore unfortunately by the time that we were able to by the time that we had to fight her Is it a game? It's D and D, Dungeons and Dragons. So I was role playing corn. We rolled crazy high yesterday, like everybody did. Poor Pulse. He was playing like his character Scribbles. Scribbles was like rolled really well, but then she just rolled better. Rolled two nat twenties against his both of his spells, man. What was it? It was like um something roar, and then um. One of Tasha's spells. Not Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Um, Tasha something. Squibbles. Squibbles. What's going on? So I am drawing. Oh, wait. Wait. No. No. Uh, hang on. I'm trying to save this file. <laughs> I am drawing a pose of a character swinging a weapon. And I'm drawing my D&D character, Corn Chip, uh, swinging his great axe. Does he always look terrified he's gonna hit someone with a knife? Nope. It was just in this case he was. Because he felt bad. He was also terrified because she looked terrifying. Um, when the parasite got to her. See, I assume it was a parasite. Because then we saw like a like a creature afterwards that like came out of her. And like almost got our ranger. But then our artificer burned it off of his body. Though our ranger was also not okay because he was like guarding her half the time. He got really attached to her. And when I say she was a like a girl, I mean she was young. Like she was like really, really young. She was eight. We were the same age. Like I'm a kid, but she was a kid as well. This actually should be a bit smaller. It was sad. It was a sad end to the Cause we had a little we had a little like Sarah, well, like not a not a ceremony. We had to like we we dug a grave for her at the end of it. It was a great session. Oh my gosh. Is this story true? Uh, it's it's Dungeons and Dragons. Um, <laughs> it's role play. It's not a it's not like a like an actual like we didn't have to fight a giant monstrous girl in the middle of the woods. No. Not in real life, but uh, in session, yes, we did. I, I, I suppose it's as true as that. Was it a player? No, no, no. She was an NPC that we grew attached to.
The parasite almost got one of the player characters. Didn't happen, though. Was she nice? Yeah, she was a sweet little girl. She was very shy. Um, her name was Hyla. She was a little elf girl. Uh, she was eight years old. What kind of balance does your group have between RP, combat, exploration, problem solving, if you mind me asking? Majority of it is RP. Um, right now, it's mostly RP. I'm a, like, we have... It's like, a, if I had to, like, guess, it's like a... It's pretty evenly split for most of it. I, I like I'd say that like combat is the least prevalent thing that's been happening, but it's not that it's not prevalent at all. We've had maybe like shoot, how many combats have we had? We've had it was the first one, and then with the Griffins, there was the Stormhold, there was the people at the tower, and then there was this little girl. We've had four combats so far. Is we haven't been playing for very long. We just did session seven. Um we do a lot of RP. We also do a lot of exploration. So it's like a lot of both. We haven't really had to do any puzzles yet. What did you imagine the parasite to look like? Oh, I, I didn't I didn't have to imagine. It was described to me. So the parasite itself kind of looked like a spider. Um, what it did to the girl... <laughs> How do I describe this in the most PG way possible? I guess she kind of also turned into a spider in a way. <laughs> a very big spider. <laughs> Hello, Night Nosk? Nah. What tool allows you to change canvas size on the fly? On Photoshop, it's just you hit C and you can just change the cropping. Um, I believe you can do the same thing on Clip Studio. Medibang, you have to open another window. Um, but there's a few tools that you can do with each one. <laughs> hate spiders. I would have been horrified. Um... Yeah, I mean, Corn was terrified. It was it, the imagery was crazy. I I literally can't tell you what actually happened because it's a little bit too R rated. Um, but Corn was freaked out. He was so scared. Everyone was really scared. Scribbles was so shook up by the end of it. Can you do that on Ibis? I don't know. I don't use Ibis. Is it realistic? What do you mean by realistic? If you want to confirm that uh, pug in a box, she did not scream. How can I send you my attempt at drawing corn? You can just send them in the, in the Discord. Thank you if you drew him. How the parasite can control of her? We don't know. Yeah, y'all, can you not spam cookies? Try not to spam the chat, please. I, I appreciate the sentiment. But uh, let's, let's not spam the chat. Unless if I ask to spam the chat. In which then we can. But right now, let's let's not do that. Imagine something horrifying. It was pretty terrifying. I'm a really big fan of body horror, though, so I was like, ooh, that's cool. <laughs> so I'm just, I was a really big fan. Is corn vegan? No. <laughs> corn eats bugs. Corn will eat anything. Corn very literally eats everything. It's it's become like a joke that, like, corn will just, you'll just find corn, like, gnawing, like, gnawing on something. Like... I had a whole conversation. I had a very, like, 2 IQ conversation with a chef once. And I talked about, like, how I would just eat the bugs in the forest back in- back at my home. <laughs> or I would, like, 
if there was like bugs in my house, I would just eat them. Because it's like, yeah, they're just, it's free protein, bro. <laughs> it's corny, corn, corn will eat anything. What's the strangest things corn corn's eaten? I had this conversation with a uh, crow, one of our other players, uh, Scares Crow Sketch on Twitter. Or sorry, Twitch. Scarecrow, I guess on Twitter too. Um, Crow plays our ranger, Pierce Doragon, who I also designed. Um, and uh, in in the forest that he's from, he there are giant spiders. So if I had to pick, he probably ate a giant spider. So I told the quick strokes from doing line art is the best strokes. Is that true? Yes, it is. The faster you move, the easier it is to do lines. Usually better to do them in one fell swoop. It doesn't pick up your your um, handshake. So you can move nice and smooth. I'm doing like, I'm doing just penciled in lines this time because like, I feel like it, it'll kind of help keep the, the roughness of it. Did he eat the little girl? No, of course not. They were friends. See, the thing is, she wasn't actually... I had to say that she looks like a big spider because that's the most PG way I can put it. <laughs> she didn't actually look like a spider. It's literally just, it's the best way that I can put it. <laughs> Has he eaten any people? No. 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 Corn doesn't eat any sentient things. Think about morality, okay? Would you, would you eat a person even if you didn't know? And you know what, actually? Some of y'all are a bit strange. I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> What's my Twitter? You can find it on the Discord. Corn just seems like an ankle biter. He is three foot four. <laughs> he is tiny. Um, he won't bite you, though. Not unless you're being really mean. Corn won't hurt anybody unless you're being really mean. Or, like, if he has to. Corn's a good boy. He's just not the smartest. <laughs> He's only got nine intelligence. Help him. He's eight years old. So be it. Can I do shading? Yep. I want to do this one to larger completion. Character's 30 foot feet. Stays that size he does, even as an adult? Is he like a gnome or a halfling? Or a dwarf? Yes, it is in my Discord bio. All my links to my socials are in my Discord bio. Letting you know now, I know a lot of people follow me on Instagram. I barely use Instagram anymore. If you want to find me where I'm most active, it's Twitter. Wanna pick up corn and take him to Disneyland? Corn would love Disneyland. He would probably like. Corn would love the largest roller coasters. He would wanna have like have the thrill. How's the entire drawing look like right now? It's like this. Who's corn? Are they a person? Corn is this character. This is corn. His name is Corn Chip, spelled C O R N. First name C H I P P E. Last name Corn Chip. Corn is my dragonborn uh, barbarian character. He is eight years old and not the smartest, but he does his best. <laughs> Any ride in particular he liked? I have never been to Disneyland, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in America. We don't have Disneyland here. Does he like cornbread? He'd probably love cornbread. He'd be confused by the name, though. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's my D&D character. He's the one that I play as right now. In the campaign that I'm in. They were referring to an actual person. No, 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 no. <laughs> could you imagine corn being real? I don't think I could handle that. As corn's creator, I don't think I could handle that.
Corn would probably love the Mount Everest roller coaster. If it's large and it's fast, then he would love it. <laughs> Corn backstory? Still a secret. Can't tell it. I feel like he would accidentally drink laundry detergent. The thing with corn is that corn's an acid dragon. So, like, he... Okay, he has resistance to acid. He probably wouldn't have resistance to laundry detergent. <laughs> corn would be poisoned. And then... Soren has lay on hands. It would be fine. <laughs> Soren is our... Paladin, our lovely human paladin. The goodest boy. The only character with a higher strength than Korn. How long is Korn's lifespan? Dragonborn lifespans are about the same as humans, so it's about uh same as us. So Korn is eight right now. Alright, Soren, there's Soren's player, Numeric Numeric Ray. Our the goodest boy. Certified goodest boy. Was Korn once at an egg? Yes. Detergent is a base, so would it neutralize his acid? Good question. Hmm. Things to think about. Oh, is it a bit longer? Hang on. I don't remember. I remember Googling it. Because it's different in Taldore, I think. Around 80, it says. Then roll 20. Dragonborn lifespan. 5e. Is it different? Still around 80. Okay. I am choosing to ignore how they age, though. <laughs> I was like, listen, he's eight, he's a child, I don't care. <laughs> Ever trying to see him draw, like, fully frown sometime? Like, see what he'd look- Oh, you'd be fully grown? I have. I've already drawn that. Same as humans. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's what I thought. I remember Googling it. A while ago and it was like yeah it's about the same as people is he like rolling down hills he probably would grown-up corn okay every person who i've talked to who's seen grown-up corn is either like he's really cool but he's also really cursed <laughs> it's like that he's cool but he's cursed hang on because Korn, when he's an adult, would be about 7 foot 8. He's tall. Big boy. Um, I have it in here somewhere. I know I do. There's Lunan. I love Lunan. Lunan's such a cool character. Wish Cryo was here. Lunan is such a sick character. Um, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I got this. There it is. Yeah, Korn as an adult would look like this. So Korn is very, very large. For reference, this character, Pierce, is our... He's six foot four. So Korn is huge. Korn would be huge as an adult. <laughs> Korn is a very, very large... He'll be grow up to be a very large character. Does he like spicy food? Korn will eat anything. Sorry, I need to do something real quick. I'm still here, I just need to document something for a sec. Okay. Trying to imagine his reaction to a ghost pepper or something. Corn's reaction to a ghost pepper. Would be he would be confused as to why the food is burning him. And then he'd go, actually, this is fine, actually. <laughs> and he'd probably just eat more. He'd, like, get used to it really quickly. I assume with something like, like, acid saliva, he would be fine. Oh, I looked at your computer and I saw it was yours. Sorry. <laughs> Corn is a 
Coronates ghost pepper breathes fire like a red dragon. True. <laughs> he'd be okay with it. He'd, be, he'd think it was fun. Ah, so what's the context of this? I played a session yesterday where we had to... We had to kill an NPC that we liked. Because she got a... She got taken over by a parasite. And we had to, like... The only way to save her was to, like, kill her. Oh, that means I have to draw Korn's cannon outfit, man. <laughs> I was, like... I was about to draw him in just, like, a hoodie and pants. I'm like, nope, this was a cannon thing that happened. So I need to draw his, like, actual outfit. Does Korn have a ref sheet? Not really. I did, like, a... There's, like, a design sheet for him, but I don't have a rough sheet. Because he's so easy to draw that it's, like, I didn't bother making one. Like, I have, like, his cannon outfit lying around somewhere. Like, as when I first initially designed him. But, like, I don't have a rough sheet. <laughs> Jess, do you not even draw the cannon outfits you designed? No. <laughs> listen, I have most of the... Listen, when I... I designed Pierce as well, right? And, like, I helped design Scribbles. It was like, I have their outfits memorized, mostly. It does not mean that I draw them. <laughs> I like fashion, okay? The outfits look great. They look fantastic. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Does Korn have a best friend? That is spoilers. I cannot say that. He reminds me of a little dragon goat. Yeah, there was a doodle that I did a while back. Now that I'm realizing it, I can't actually show the doodle. But, like, it was... <laughs> Just because the joke is not PG. But, like, if there's a... There's a doodle of Korn. He's, like, he's like crying when he goes to Pierce. And, like, there was a... It, like from the front like this it was front facing corn and everyone was like my gosh he looks like a he looks like a goat and i was like that's so true <laughs> he looked like a he looked like asriel from undertale that was like kind of how he looked and i was like oh my gosh true actually it's the cutest drawing i've ever done of corn and I, I like i can't show it <laughs> does he know how to draw it nope he likes to read though he loves comics Corn cannot draw to save his life. He's he is not artistic. <laughs> my uh my warlock, he can sing. He can't uh he can't draw though. <laughs> he also cannot draw to save his life. I actually have very few artist characters. Like in terms of like illustrators, I have like maybe like one artist character and then everybody else can like either sing or dance. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like I just like writing performance artists more than I like writing like illustrative artists i could not tell you why though what's his favorite book <laughs> good question <laughs> i didn't write that in i like to think that he just likes any book that he can pick up but he prefers like action books like comics and whatever does he have a snake tongue yep he's got the little fork tongue do y'all live stream your D&D sessions? No. The D&D &D group that I work for does, though. I my Our sessions are private, but uh, I do work for a public D&D &D show. No, there's a character that can't read common cries. <laughs> Korn can read. I think that's the only reason he has nine intelligence, is that he can read. Can he read well? That's the question. <laughs> he probably just does his best. Not gonna lie. I know. I don't. I don't care that nine is literally just one point above human average, uh, below human average. What's the setting for our campaign? Taldore. How will the corn cinematic details be released to the public at the same time as they are released to the players? <laughs> Whatever is public knowledge to the other players will be public knowledge to you eventually.
I actually don't watch Crit Roll. My uh, my friends all do. So like they were like, well, start the this the like they were like we're doing a Teldari campaign, which is like a Crit Roll uh, setting. I like this place a lot. They recently Crit Roll released a, a a playlist for the Teldari setting. I haven't even watched um, Vox Machina, and I know I need to. Because <laughs> the animation looks great and the characters are all so good looking, and I'm like, man, I need to watch it. <laughs> Corn being that one kid in class who spends five minutes on a paragraph. I used to know a couple kids like that, where it was like they would just be reading and it would take forever for them to get past the paragraph, and I was like, bro, please, let, just let me read it. I remember we used to do a thing when I was in eighth grade. And, like, we had to we had to read a book. It was called The Outsiders. Really great book, by the way. Um, and we read The Outsiders, and it was a thing where um, you would read a page, and then um, we would swap who would read the page. Like, every page would be a different person. So, like, I would always be excited when it was my turn to read a page. But when, like, there was there would be, like, a kid who is not, like, great at reading, and he would read the page, and I'd get so annoyed um, because I'm a snob. But, like... You watched it? Did you watch Vox Machina, Daria? I need to watch it. <laughs> Just read The Outsiders. The Outsiders is a great book. 1 to 10, how smart is Korn? In his... As his stats, Korn is a 9 out of 20 in intelligence. How good is he at fighting? He's a barbarian. So he has a really... He can do a lot of damage. He's got a strength of 17... Um, his great axe does a d12 plus 3 of damage. To hit is plus 5. Um, he do do big boy damage. And my, I have the, I have the highest amount of hit points in the, like, I have the highest HP in the party right now. Um, because I rolled max HP for my boy. We're at level 4 right now. I have 54 points of HP. For those of you who play DD, <laughs> I have a lot of HP. <laughs> what would somebody with 20 int feel like? They would be crazy smart. I apologize to anybody who has to play a 20 int character. Good lord. I could never. I struggle with a 9 int character because 9 int means that you're just, like, not really smart. So, like, sometimes, like, I, so then I can't really, like, theorize or I can't really. Um, pertain to like smart conversation so I just kind of have to sit there and I'm just like I'm like vibrating in my seat I'm like <sighs> just like man it's like I'm screaming guys <laughs> I want to contribute <laughs> level one no 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 54 HP at level four Yeah, 20 int would be like a 200 IQ character. You'd have such high IQ. How many stats are there to a specific characters, and how do you go about judging how they rank? Let me go and look at my stat sheet really quick, because I don't remember. Okay, because I can't do it off the top of my head. I haven't been playing for long enough. So, with any character, you have, like, your base stats are strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Um, and they're all out of 20. So, like, 10 is, like, human average. 10 points of whatever is human average. So, if, say, if you have, like, 10 intelligence, you are absolutely average for the human. For, like, a regular human. So, below that is below human average. Above that is above human average. So, you can get, you can have any of your, like, any of your stats at, like, from 1 to 20. But when you start off, your max is, like, 18 or something. character i want to max in custom dnd light rp negative two strength hp of nine nine hp i'm so sorry <laughs> was that like a level one wizard or something oh no like i can't deal with super high int. like max int is too much because like like i'm not smart enough for that i'm not smart enough to be like a max int. i can do above average i can do like maybe like a i could do like a like a 13 to 14 in character i can't do like 18, 19, <laughs> like that's too high intelligence. I'm not smart enough. 
How do I rotate the canvas? Um, I like never rotate the canvas. There's a shortcut for it. I don't remember what it is. I like, I never rotate the canvas. Hang on. There you go. It's with R, so you can rotate with R. So if I like went to R, I could like rotate like that. But I never rotate the canvas. <laughs> so I just always leave it like this. I always, I flip the canvas a lot, but I never rotate it. Why is his name Corn? Um, I, I'm going to be real with you. I like it. It I, It was just the first name that popped into my head for some reason. I couldn't get it out. And then I was like, all right, I guess that's his name. And then like, I decided to base him off of like the, I would sell your soul for one corn chip meme. That's li That's literally it. That's, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's his that's why his name is corn <laughs> corn chip custom rp based on existing fandom he wasn't a wizard but a monster tamer in skills once commanding and being very persuasive ah well persuasive is um that's charisma that's not necessarily in um but If you're good at, like... Because Int is, like... Int is, like, very, like, textbook knowledge. Like, how textbook knowledge heavy are you? Like, Corrin has a wisdom of nine... Or, an Int of nine, but he has a wisdom of eleven. So he has, like, one point above, like, human average. Which I... I, I like to take that out in, like, one-liners. Because, like, you know, like, when you talk to, like, little kids, and sometimes they'll tell you, like... I don't know how many y'all are adults in chat right now. You know when, like, you talk to a little kid, and then, like, somehow they'll just tell you something, and you're like, oh. <laughs> it just feels like, like, the strangest hit of, like, knowledge comes to you. Or, like, they just hit you with, like, this really existential question. Like, that's, that's how I like to bring it out in corn. So, like, if I, if, like, when I, when I play corn, um, he goes, like, I'm trying to think. What was a fun one? Uh, I had a serious conversation with uh, our sorcerer, Atros, and Atros was, like, um, sad about a thing. And Atros was, like... Atros was, like, I'm the... I was, like, trying to check up on Atros and be, like, are you okay and whatever. And Atros was, like, was, like, no, I'm fine. It's, like, I'm the happy one, remember? And then I was, like... I was, like, I mean, you don't seem, like, too okay. And she was, like... Um, shoot. There was, like, there was a very specific line that led up to it. Because I was like, I was like, maybe you can talk about it if, like, you're not feeling okay. And Atros was like, talking about it doesn't really make me feel better. And it's like, I'll be, it's like, I'll be fine. It's like, I'll, I'll be happy again. And then I was like, you gotta feel sad before you can feel happy again. Or something like that. It's like, you gotta be, you gotta feel sad before you can feel happy again. Like that, that was what I said. I was like, that's my favorite line that I've said so far. That's one of them. And then, again, another line with Atros. It was like, um... Shoot. Um... Like, after the fight with uh, this little girl, like, in our previous session... Um... I said, like, I said that I wasn't doing too great. And Atros was like, I'm sorry. And then I was like, I'm not the one you should be sorry to. The one we should be sorry to is dead. That's another favorite line of mine. <laughs> Corn is adorbs. Corn is adorbs. What's my favorite pose to draw? I really love drawing um, dancing poses. I love drawing contortionist poses. Um, I actually really like drawing sleeping poses. Sleeping poses is a really nice one. It's very relaxing. What brushes do I use? I am using a lot of Photoshop default brushes, um, and then other artists' brushes. Some and a lot of my brushes are custom as well, so they're not really up for. Unless if you have Photoshop, they're kind of hard to get. They're Kyle brushes, Kyle Webster brushes, which are really nice brushes. Um, some of his brushes are free, but a lot of the main ones, you like, they're through Adobe. Um,
No, 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 no. I like acrobatics. I love drawing, like, acrobatics and ballet and whatnot. Those tend to be my favorite ones. How would Corn fight feel if he found out his name was based off of a meme? He would ask what a meme is. Because he wouldn't know what a meme is. <laughs> Gosh, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> this is taking a lot longer. I guess it's just the brush that I'm using as well. I'm treating it like one of my, my late night doodles. Oh, good heavens. This is wrong. This is why we turn off the sketch layer, ladies and gentlemen. How would he react if he found out what a meme is? He would be the cringiest iPad kid. It'd be great. Any reason why you won't or don't like to rotate the canvas? Usually just because I don't need to. I've never had a need to, so I just don't. I flip the canvas, but I don't rotate it. Also, I just kind of rotate my head. I'm working on, like, a screen tablet, like a big Cintiq, so I just, like, kind of move my entire body. <laughs> Basically, to draw motion, you just add some ear lines. Not necessarily, I just like to. Motion is more than just some ear lines. Motion is, like, movement and motions. Like, it's a lot of, like, figuring out your posing, figuring out your... What's it called? Figuring out posing, figuring out line of action, so on and so forth. Oh yeah, since you draw on an iPhone, for sure. Yeah, no, like, rotating, moving, like, that's necessary. Um, yeah, no, I, I draw on, like, a big screen tablet on my PC, so it's, like, it's fine. The pose he's pulling back the axe? Yep, so he's pulling it back before he swings. I was gonna draw him, like, actually, like, slicing it into whatever he's fighting, but then I realized I probably can't draw that monster on stream. I was like, man, <laughs> never mind, I guess. <laughs> Any free programs you recommend? Yes, so we use Medibang mostly on this channel. Um, a lot of people in chat really like Krita. I don't personally really like Krita, but, like, I know that it's, like, fine. It's, like, good. It, but, I, like, I don't recommend it as your first program. I think that's, like, my main thing. Um... What's he cutting? It's who it's who that we fought last night. What's corn spear slash staff made of? Looks like a deer antler or something. Yeah, so I wanted it to be like partially brass and partially well not brass, but like some some kind of like darker metal and then like a deer antler. I wanted it to be very natural looking. Like I wanted it to be like mostly wood and natural stuff. Like it's uh oh my gosh. Malachite right here and over here as well. It's, like, very, very ornate. Because he took it from the village owner. <laughs> well, he was skipping town. Sent on his merry way. What's his favorite sport? Corn would probably really like rugby. Actually, you know what? No. He would like badminton. Because then he gets to swing a thing. <laughs> badminton or baseball. I feel like he would like those too. He's got really stubby legs. So like rugby would frustrate him. But like he gets to swing a thing. Either baseball or like swing it really hard. Like either baseball or. Or um. Uh, 
badminton or tennis. Second moose antler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was referencing moose antlers while I was drawing it. <laughs> Local eight-year-old passing by a village steals village elder's axe and goes on about their day. <laughs> It was really funny. When Corrin first met the party, it was like a like a thing where people were like Corrin would like excitedly show off his axe. <laughs> he showed it off to everybody, he's scared, poor Soren. <laughs> it's not my axe, but like, I'm gonna give it back. When I get back home, I'll give it back. Because it's it's not mine. Like I didn't steal it, I borrowed it because I'm gonna get it back <laughs> that was like the whole thing <laughs> am I drawing on a computer or a tablet I'm drawing on a computer how does he laugh I laughed in a <laughs> I laughed in a session recently but it's it's hard to it's hard to replicate I don't know how I did it the first time I don't think I can again <laughs> I don't think I can do it on command not easily anyway my voice is already getting kind of kind of shot right now, so I'm like, probably not. Is that his voice? Yeah, that's how he sounds. I remember Pierce warning Soren that Corn can just breathe acid. <laughs> that was really funny. It's like it's like you may wanna may wanna put you devices away. This bite's a special. <laughs> I can't do an Australian accent. <laughs> Pierce is an Australian accent. He's our Eldrin Elf Ranger. I love Pierce. I helped design Pierce. Um, he's great. How does he cry? I can't do that on command. I haven't tried. Yeah, what is he so I think to, like I was like when I was just, when I was thinking of Corn's voice, <laughs> I was like, okay, he needs to be like some kind of like strange combination between like Ash Ketchum and Morgana from Persona 5. Like he's gotta be like this <laughs> He's gotta be like a mishmash of the two. <laughs> Pikachu <laughs> Gotta catch them all, you know, that kind of deal. <laughs> Is drawing on a paper better than a computer or tablet? They are... They both have their positives and negatives. It just depends on what you're more comfortable with. That's why his voice sounded familiar. Yeah, yeah, I wanted it to be very Ash Ketchum-y. <laughs> are we able to do his subclass? Yes, he's a totem... Totem of the Bear Barbarian. Um, so Totem of the Bear gives me advantages to my rage... For those of you who play D&D, I get resistance to all types of attacks, minus psychic. Um, so I take half damage on every single type of attack, um, except for psychic damage. So when I rage, I get resistance to, like, everything except for psychic, which is, like, busted. <laughs> I wanted him to be as busted as possible. <laughs> Of Corn's voice is so cute. Thank you. I try. Is Clip Studio Paint worth it to buy? Yes. Clip is a fantastic program. Um, Clip is the program that I use the second most next to Photoshop. Clip I use mostly for its extra little functions. Um, especially when I'd be drawing comic pages. Um, Clip has a lovely little function uh, where you can just set up perspective lines. Um, and you can have your lines snap to them. Um, so, like, when I'd be doing big buildings or, like, really big backgrounds, I switched to Clip Studio so that I could do that. Um, Clip also has a lovely time-lapse function. Photoshop actually doesn't have one of those. Um, so, it's nice to use just in case if I ever wanted to do that. Is he a kobold? No, he's a dragonborn. He's just a baby. He's eight years old. Now I feel a little bad for the DM. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'll have you know that Kay loves me. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit presumptuous. 
you like cheese? Corn will eat anything. Corn will love cheese. Corn would love pizza. Like, if pizza was a thing, like in D&D, corn would love pizza. It's okay, we have modern AU. Corn would love pizza. <laughs> hard to balance an encounter. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so our entire party is busted. I mean, our entire party. I have the lowest stats of the party, and my lowest stat is a 9. So if you want to hear my stats, um, I have a 17 strength, 14 dex, 14 con, 9 int, 11 whiz, and 12 charisma. I have the lowest stats of the party. Um, our artificer... Artificer, um, lovely Lunin. Lunin is the coolest character ever. Lunin, his lowest stat is a 12, and that's in his strength. Um, and he has two 18s. <laughs> Lunin is busted, busted. I remember watching Lunin's stats get rolled, and we were like, <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Lunin was crazy. I love Lunin. Hang on, I have a, I have a drawings of Lunin somewhere. Lunin is, like, so fun to draw. Hang on. I also helped design Lunin. Lunin is just a great character overall. I'll keep talking about Lunin all the time. Like, he's just great. Here he is. So, that's not, that's not, like, his official outfit. But Lunin is a shifter. Shifter artificer. Um, and he's a, he's a falcon. So, he's got feathers on the top of his head. I love Lunin so much. He's so cool. Every every session, he has something so cool that he does. <laughs> what if corn was gluten free? He is not. My boy will eat anything. <laughs> he eats dirt. <laughs> What's an artificer? Artificer is like the. Oh shoot! How do I describe artificer? It's like a like a. Cause it it depends on what. Artificer. I don't I I don't know if it's artificer or artificer. However you say it. Masters of invention, artificers are, use ingenuity and magic to unlock extraordinary capabilities and objects. They see magic as a complex system waiting to be decoded, then harnessed in their spells and inventions. You can find everything you need to play in one of these inventors in the next few sections. Yes, yeah, so artificers are like inventors. Like inventors and builders and blacksmiths, alchemists. Um, so Lunin is a... Oh, we don't actually know. I don't know what his subclass is. Um, but he he's like a... He makes his own, like, he has, like, a homebrewed, like, revolver that just never runs out of ammo. I think it's called Featherweight? I don't remember. Shoot. I don't remember the name of his revolver. It was a really cool name. I don't remember it. <laughs> it's, like, a black revolver, and then it has, like, like a, like, a really pretty, like, feather design going along it. And then he has a, a homunculus who's, like, a drone, um, and his name is Ducky. Ducky's great. I love Ducky. Just a magic inventor, yeah. Imagine finding corn in your basement. If corn was in your basement, he would just ask for food. Axel's super cool. Thank you. Ducky. Ducky is the best. Hang on. Do I have any... Do I have doodles of Ducky. I know I do. I have a doodle with du of Ducky with corn, actually. Hang on. Somewhere in here. Mara, that's Pierce. There he is. Yeah, so Ducky's this little little flying drone. Ducky's great. I love Ducky. <laughs> How can I this this is DD Dungeons and Dragons. This is my own session though. This is this is our campaign, so you unfortunately cannot play it. Um but our setting is Taldore, if you ever wanted the same setting. So I don't I don't know how. Um I don't know if K's our RDM is working off of a, a module or not though. I don't think so. I think he's just working off of the setting.
Have I ever made a demon character in D&D? &D? Uh, does our tiefling count? <laughs> we recently had like a parasitic demon-ish thing. Is D&D only a board game? It is a tabletop RPG, so no, it's not a board game. Um, but you, you, we play over the internet. Um, but it isn't it isn't RPG, so you, it is a role-playing game. But uh, instead of like on a device, you role play yourself. Does he have favorite hobbies or games to do or play? Not really. Kind of just vibes. Yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. Tieflings are generally devils, touch not demons. Very important distinction, I guess. I right, sick. Well, then no. <laughs> Looks like Alphys from Undertale. I've been told Azrael, not Alphys, but I think that Alphys fits a bit better. Corn is just the star of the stream. I'm literally drawing him, so I mean, <laughs> he's my character. <laughs> Goodness, I thought I was gonna be able to fully color this. I guess not. That's fine. I'll just shade it. D&D &D definitely stands for devils and demons, true. <laughs> He's laughing when he zooms, so he's crying. Yeah, yeah. How did I do that? <sighs> I should write a comic where all my lettering is hand done. I do like lettering a lot. D and D stands for dice and desperation. True, that one's true. Would corn turn into a popcorn if you put him in the microwave for a few minutes? No, he would probably break out of the microwave because he does not like the heat. <laughs> What platforms can I play on? How free is a character creation? You can create your characters on D and D Beyond, um, but you need a set of other people to play with. It's not like it's a it's not like it's a thing you can play single player. You have to play with a bunch of people. Um, so I'm not the only member of the party. Am I gonna paint him? No, I'm probably just gonna shade him. I've literally not been a person who hand lettered a comic without going insane. I like hand lettering. <laughs> You already know me as insane, Oz. There's no difference here. How large is my group? Oh shoot, there's me, there's Ray, there's Ray, there's Crow, Pulse. Wait, is he anybody? I'm not. Oh, Cryo. There's six of us. The party of six. And then, mo like, there's a party of six, and then our DM. So there's seven of us in total. I was like, I'm missing something. I've been giving Loon in praise this whole time. I can't believe this. Um, <laughs> I'm just crying. Um, it's a good amount. Yeah. How consistent is that group? Oh, we're there every week. We're playing, we played yesterday. We're going to play again next week, Thursday. Because we, we don't have, like, a, a day that we always play on. It's, like, a 
it's determined by the week because we're all like busy people um so like every time we finish a session we determine when the next one's happening and who's free You thought it's raining someone else where somewhere else started playing valid. Great song. Ugh. D&D &D stands for dishwasher and detergent. True. Hang on. I have I have a drawing of the I have drawings of the entire party. Just give me a second. No, hang on. Small character, big weapon, perfect. So true. Technically, his weapon's even bigger than this, but I was like, you know what? We're just gonna, just to make sure that it fits the composition. Okay. So I have, I've drawn the entire party. It's just only in their fancy outfits, which is like not their canon outfits, but it's okay. It's fine. Um... Load, please. Thank you. So this is Lunin. Lunin's our shifter artificer. He's great. I love Lunin to death. Uh, this is Scribbles. Squibbles. Scribbles is our wizard. Wizard Bard. Tabaxi Wizard Bard. <clears throat> He's a little... A little troublemaker. I love Scribbles. Um, this is Atros. Atros is our tiefling sorcerer. Atros is great. He's great. Um, we don't have any... We don't have any women in this party. We're all men. Um, Atros is a... Yeah, is a... Sorcerer Tiefling. He's great. I love Atros. Very flamboyant. This is Pierce. Pierce is our ranger Eldrin elf. Uh, Drake Warden. See, he's a, he has a dragon as well. His name's Puddles. Um, I didn't draw Puddles in this, but I did also help design Puddles. Um, this is Soren. Soren is certified good boy. He is a paladin. A paladin human. As far as we know, none of us think he's human, but he's paladin human. Um, and then Korn, who's our dragonborn barbarian. Um, but yeah, we all play as boys. There's three girls in our party and we all play boys. <laughs> I have no clue why. It was like when we all created our characters, it just became a thing. It was like, oh yeah, we're all playing men. Did you realize that? And I was like, oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> Lavender hair. Yeah, Soren is like a... Nope, that's Atros. Soren is a... Is a favorite of a lot of ours. I love Soren. I remember when I first saw Soren, I was like, you're so cute. Um, Soren is 21. He's... Uh, 20 strength. So Soren is the only character with a higher strength than me. Um, so Korn has the, despite being the barbarian, Korn has the second highest strength of the party. Soren is indeed the only human in our party. Though none of us think he's a human, but like, we're like, yeah, you're human. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, none of us, none, none of the rest of us are humans. Lunin is a shifter. Pierce is an elf. Um, Scribbles is a tabaxi. Dark Oop, light purple dress thing. Ah, oh, Atros. Atros is lovely. I, I like. I'm the most proud of how I colored Atros. The way that I did the the face on this one. Atros's character, she gave me the dress and she was like, she was like, can you please put him in this? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I was like, of course, obviously. Scribbles is a what? Tabaxi. A tabaxi. It's like a, like a cat character. T-A-B-A-X-I. Tabaxi. I'm a dragonborn. Atros. A-E-T-R-O-S. Atros is a tiefling. Very sparkly. Yeah, his his whole shtick is that he is very sparkly. <laughs> well, not his whole shtick, but like his uh, his outwards personality is that he is very very sparkly, glittery boy. I keep forgetting he's a shifter, not a changeling. Yeah, I love Lunin. Lunin's so cool, man. I'm, every time there was a point that Lunin like Lunin was being followed by this guy. 
and this guy like mugged him, so then Luden also mugged him. It was so cool though, it was really cool. <laughs> Cause he got Ducky to follow him and like he went down an alleyway. It was so sick. Oh my gosh. I love Lunin. What do you mean? Oh, fire racer still. Oops. What do I suggest for traditional artists? Um, when I work traditionally, I really like working with pen and paper. Um, I really like pen, I really like graphite. I would recommend just using as many materials as you can, see what you like. Especially if you're not really used to drawing just yet. Experiment as much as you can. Work with the unorthodox materials. Be creative. Drawing materials are sometimes not the only materials you can use. How often do I stream? Every week. Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern. Next week is gonna be such a chill stream. It's a it's a stream where I just get to like redraw my old art. It's gonna be great. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited. I am the most concerned about the traditional versus digital stream. I'm gonna have to figure out how to set up traditional work. <laughs> A traditional workspace. started with a different view first. Like, that would have been, like, good. <laughs> how long has your specific campaign been going on? How long are they traditionally? I don't know how long they are traditionally, um, but our campaign, like, just started. We're on session seven. Or we just did session seven. Why oh, he's so sad? He had to fight a character he didn't want to fight. I didn't get the how do you want to do this. Soren got the how do you want to do this, but uh Soren has got just so many how do you want to do this. -es. It's great. Oh no, we were all fighting the character. None of us wanted to fight this character. But we all had to fight her. crying because he is crying. He was sad. He was mostly scared. He was mostly terrified. <laughs> he was very scared yesterday <laughs> in the yesterday's uh, yesterday's session. Um, but he, he was sad. He was sad about it. So he couldn't save this little girl. 
I'm not the one you should be sorry to. The one we should be sorry to is dead. My banger line of the of the session. Who's my favorite artist? My favorite artist is Nadia Kim. And Kim Illustrate on Twitter. Really like the background music, what I use, you can find it in the link in the description. It's like the very last link. Thank you. Oh boy, I didn't realize how close we are to the end. <laughs> I just looked down and looked at the time and I was like, oh shoot, wait. <laughs> Does CSP have a blending option? It should. There should be a blender in there. Let me do this magic. Let's just do that and then like Yeah. Genius. <laughs> Sorry if I'm kind of being quiet for a second. I'm trying to, like, focus on finishing this. <laughs> Have a Kirby mouse icon? I do! Yeah. It's a, it's a club. My obsession with Kirby is heavier than any other obsession. <laughs> I have many corbs. The more corbs, the better. That's my philosophy. I shouldn't have darkened that so much. Yeah. Sure. Let's just keep it for now. How to draw a character in a different outfit and hairstyle than normal still looks like her? I... That's not a question I've been asked before. Like, facial structure, probably? Like, if it doesn't look like them, then you're probably drawing them completely different. A character shouldn't rely on their outfit <laughs> for them to look like them. You need to make sure that their facial structure looks the same. Line waiting is really important. You don't mind me. I'm just trying to <laughs> move faster. <laughs>
Yep, my apologies. <laughs> Nah, that doesn't look good. Uh, I should have just left it. It's fine. There we go. Contrast. Contrast is important. curves my sword enemy. I only know them because of photography. I grew up with curves. It is what I know best. Okay. Okay, cool. We're good with that. Alright! Thank you so, so much for joining everyone. That's gonna be it for this stream thank you so so much for joining if you didn't know too much about the studio we're gonna tell you about it now um we're not just a youtube channel i also don't own it we are a art studio so if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer classes for the summer i believe registration is still open for both summer camps and just summer classes so if you'd like to join in those check out the link um, to our website if you'd like to this file these two files that you see in front of you will be available on the discord make sure you can download the jpegs keep them safe if you want with them it's there for you um and that is there for your discretion um and if you'd like to um check out our patreon our patreon is gonna get a revamp soon five dollars a month is my working files soon there will also be class recordings up in there so other recorded content that you can't see here um but yeah there's gonna be a lot of other things coming up in the patreon so hopefully we'll get that implemented really soon next week uh the stream is going to be ah redrawing by old art so i'm gonna be picking an old piece of mine i'm gonna be redrawing it i'm gonna be doing it again um but yeah thanks so so much for joining everyone i'll see y'all next week au revoir bye bye <laughs>